Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, بعد بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون Allah has given you the prescription of fasting just as he prescribed it for the peoples before us all of the previous religious traditions had some element of fasting in their tradition the Christians used to fast for 40 days the Jews also had fasting and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us fasting and then he gives us the reason it's called tanbihul kitab when Allah tells you why he's doing something la'allakum tattaqun in order that you learn piety this is one of the most important elements of fasting is to learn piety and from piety is sabr and that's why Ramadan is the month of patience is learning to be patient Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says the the command that he gives in al-Baqarah is that he created us and those that were before us and then he told us to worship him that we might be pious that we might learn this taqwa and so the the ramadan is a madrasa it's a it's a school it's like continuing education that you go back to like a physician or anybody that's in a a type of practice that needs uh, the skills to be upgraded, enhanced. Ramadan is the yearly time that we return to this school of taqwa and of sabr. The Jumu'ah is the weekly time. The prayers are the daily times that we return, we realign ourselves with the divine. Human beings are in heedlessness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَضْحَكُونَ وَتَبْكُونَ وَأَنْتُمْ سَامِدُونَ You laugh. We, and you are in a state of heedlessness, that you, you, you forget your Lord. This is one of the deepest illnesses of the human being. Imam al-Junaid, when he was asked what he thought the foundational sin of the human being was, he said that it was ghafla, it was heedlessness, because all sins emanate from heedlessness. But there's another reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this uh, practice of fasting. In the, in the verses that follow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, First of all, لَعَلَكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودَاتِ Ayam is called جَمْعُ qilla. It's a, a plural of paucity. It's a plural that indicates that there, are, there is not much of it, like amwal. Because wealth, mal, there's not much of wealth. People don't have a lot of wealth. So amwal is the plural of wealth to indicate that wealth is something that is limited. أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودَاتِ Limited days. You have a few days. And then, وَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفْرًا فَعِدَّةٌ مِنَ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرْ But you can make up those days if you were sick or traveling. وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدْيَةُ طَعْمِ مَسَاكِينَ Or فِدْيَةٌ طَعْمُ مِسْكِينَ That if, you, if, you're, uh, if, if, if you're, you're able to do it, then you can give fidya, so you pay. That was abrogated. Uh, by the verses that follow. So people used to be able to do fidya if they were wealthy, they could do fidya, but that was removed. And everybody has to fast unless you're sick, uh, and then you can do fidya for that. But other than that, everybody has to fast. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about this fidya to Woman khayran lahu. And whoever does uh, extra, this is better for him. Again, those were abrogated, but they still apply to nafila fasting. You draw near to your Lord with nawafil, with extra acts, until Allah loves you. And so fasting is one of the ways, three months, uh, three days out of the month, it was the practice of the Prophet ﷺ. Some of the Sahaba practiced the fast of Dawood ﷺ, which was every other day. Some practiced Monday, and Thursday. But the Prophet himself, his practice was three, Ayyam al the three days of the, the white day, the white days. So the fasting woman, But to fast is better for you, that's if you have a choice. Like if you're traveling, it's better to fast. Some say, though, if there's difficulty, that you should leave it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzira fihi al Quran. This shahar, this month, is the month that the Qur'an was revealed. The Qur'an, the inzal of the Qur'an, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadri. On the 27th, according to most of the scholars, but the Prophet said, look for it in the odd days of the last 10 days. The Quran came down to sama'u dunya, the entire Quran. Jibreel alayhi salam brought the Quran down to the, the, this earthly canopy, the heavens, the earth of the heavens. And then over 23 years, kana munazzalan, mufarraqan. It was revealed piecemeal to the Prophet ﷺ based on the circumstances and the incidents over uh, the lives of the Sahaba and the Prophet himself So the Quran came down in Zal one time. And then over 23 years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it through Jibreel, allamahu shadeed al-quwa, piecemeal. So this is Shahru Ramadan. It represents the gift of the Quran, which is why we return to the Quran in Shahru Ramadan. The Prophet said in a sound hadith, he said, Inna siyama wal Qur'ana yashfa'ani lil abdi. The, 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 the fasting and the Quran will intercede for you. Allah gives them a voice on Yawm Qiyamah and they intercede for people that practice it. What does Siyam say? Qala Siyamu man'atuhu wa ta'ama wa shahawat fi naharihi fa shafi'ni fihi. I prevented him from his appetites in the daytime and from uh, his food. And so allow me to intercede for him. Al-Quran yaqul, Manatuhu nawmuhu bil I prevented him from sleeping at night. These are the things that we do. So fasting is not just in the daytime. There's an element in the nighttime, which is sleeping less than we normally sleep. So we eat less than we normally eat, and we sleep less than we normally sleep. And what is the gift? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts her, فَيُشَفَّعَانِ He grants them their shafa'a for the servants that do this. Look at the Prophet ﷺ. He didn't increase his tahajjud. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ تَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِرَةً لَكْ He didn't increase his prayers in Ramadan. We do to get closer to the practice of the Prophet that he did every all day, every year. يَا أَيُّهَا الْمُزَمِّرْ قُومَ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا نُصْفَهُ وَأَنْقُصْ مِنْهُ قَلِيلًا أَوْ زِدْ عَلَيْهِ وَرَتِّلُ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا That was his practice the whole year. The Prophet was practicing. He didn't increase his, his practice of prayers. Aisha رضي الله عنه عطاء One of the great salaf. عطاء said دخلت على عائشة فقلت لها يا يا عائشة أخبرين بأعجب ما رأيت من رسول الله Tell us the most wondrous thing that you saw from the Messenger of Allah. And she said, Ayu sha'nihi laysa ajaba. What thing that he did wasn't wondrous. Walakin dakhala alayya layla fadakhala firashi. He came one night to me and he entered into the, the bed with me. Hatta massa jilduhu jildi. I could feel his flesh up against my flesh. فَقَالَ يَا إِبْنَةَ أَبِي بَكَرْ ذَرِينِ أَتَعَبَّدُ لِرَبِّي O oh, daughter of Abu Bakr, leave me to go and pray to my Lord. And she said, Wallahi, إِنِّي أُحِبُّ قُرْبَكَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ I love to be close to you. لَكِنْ أُوْثِرُ هَوَاكْ But I prefer what you prefer. فَقَامَ he got up to the place, the water container, and he did wudu, and it was a light wudu. So he began to cry until the tears covered his chest. And he continued like that until Bilal came and he told him the prayers come in. In other words, Fajr. So Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, ma yubkik, ma yubkik, wa qad ghafara Allahu laka ma taqaddama min dhambika wa ma ta'akhara. What is making you cry when, the prophet, when your sins or anything you've done and his sins are doing a virtuous thing when a more virtuous thing could be done? 
when all your sins have been forgiven, what passed and what is to come? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Awram akun abdan shakura. Should I not be a grateful slave? Should I not be a grateful slave? In the hadith, in a similar hadith in Al-Bukhari, حَتَّى تَوَرَّمَتْ قَدَمَا فَسَأَلَتْهُ فَقَالَ أَوَلَمْ يَكُنْ عَبْدًا شُكُرًا He stood until his feet had the edema from, from, from standing so long. And he said, shouldn't I be a grateful slave? Gratitude. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَرَى سَفْرًا فَعِدَّةٌ مِنَ أَيَّامَ الْأُخَرْ يُرِيدُ بِكُمَ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمَ الْعُسْرَ Allah wants ease for you in this fasting. He doesn't want hardship for you. مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرَانَ لِتَشْقَى He didn't reveal this Qur'an for you to be miserable. He wants ease for you. وَلِتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ In order for you to complete this fasting, in order for you to, to elevate your Lord, to declare His greatness, and in order for you to be grateful. Gratitude. This is the secret of Ramadan. This is the time to be reminded. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُولُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِلَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ O oh, you who believe, eat of the good things of Allah. But show gratitude for those things. If you are truly worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the most blessed things that we have in this world is food. It brings us together. It nourishes our bodies. It sustains us. And then the pleasure of food itself. This is a great gift. Allah could have made brackish water that we had to drink. He could have given us rocks that we had to crush as our nutrition. But He gave us cherries and grapes and figs. He gave us very varieties of meat. He gave us all of the blessings that the earth brings forth. What, is, what does Allah ask us? Shukr. اعملوا آل داود شكرا وقليل من عبادي الشكور Work, do things out of gratitude. O oh, Al Dawood, and how few of my servants are always grateful. Always grateful. Awalam akun abdan shakura. This is, he didn't say, Awalam akun abdan shakira. Shouldn't I be a grateful servant? Shakir, you can be shakir one time or another time. When you're shakur, it's called sigha mubalagha. It's the form of hyperbole. It means you're always grateful. Our Prophet ﷺ was always in a state of gratitude. 